All right, so today we're in the middle of a cam swap on the old rot staying. We got it all put back together and we're at the point where we're ready to prime our oil system before we fire it. And since this is a flat tap at cam, we need to break this guy in. So um, I wanna go ahead and prime the oil system so all our lifters are pumped up and we have oil to everything before we go ahead and fire it and give our lifters their best possible chance to uh, um, run in, so to speak. And we're gonna run our break-in step on it as well. Obviously, we've added our um, break-in additive zinc. I don't really like flat tap at cams, but this is an 84 block and that's what belongs in it. And this car and engine by no means deserves a link bar uh, roller lifter conversion. So that's what she got out of the swap. So um, just a little bit about flat tap at cams. You always wanna make sure to run zinc in every oil change. It's extremely important. So anyway, uh, moving forward, we're gonna prime the oiling system today. And the Chevy is a lot easier than the Ford because the Ford oil pump drive shaft, instead of being a slot like the Chevrolet on the Ford, it's like a, it's like a hex. And here we have a distributor that kind of gives you an idea of what we're dealing with. Now, um, the easiest way I've found to go ahead and prime the old Ford system, and really I do this for the Chevrolet builds as well, is I just take an old distributor that's pretty much worthless and I convert it to an oil pump driver. Now I do this just by simply knocking off the cam gear off the bottom and then we mount something that either we can hook a speed handle to or today I'm kind of lazy so we're going to use a drill. Um, now on the Chevrolet I'm pretty sure and correct me if I'm wrong the lifter oil passage uh, runs into the body of the distributor so if you don't have it in there I believe um, it has some trouble uh, pumping up and priming everything because what we want to see is oil coming out of all of our push rods on the rockers. But it's been a while since I've done a Chevrolet, so I could be mistaken there. That could be a different engine. Um, getting more to the point here, uh, this is just really nice again so that we don't have any uh, dry start when we go ahead and fire our engine off for the first time. Now there really isn't anything all too complex about this. It's just like a normal distributor except you don't have to mesh with the cam there so she drops right in and now um, when we're turning our shaft we're just turning the oil pump and nothing else so we're not putting a rotation through the engine we're just turning our oil pump so this works really well to go ahead and prime our system so i'm going to break out the drill here and we're going to run it we're going to run it um, counterclockwise and basically what we're looking for is again we'll start to see oil coming out of our push rods when everything's all primed up. Now on the subject of soaking lifters, um, pretty much on any build, I just go ahead and prime the oiling system. So I never really soak my lifters because when you're doing this, you're gonna go ahead and prime those lifters up. And um, you'll see here at some point, I'll turn the crank. I'll turn it about 45 degrees, run the drill, turn another 45 degrees, because some of these based on the lifter position won't pump up. So in doing this, we make sure we get everything oiled. And if we see oil coming out of all of our push rods here, obviously our lifters are completely full and we're good to go. So without further ado, I'm gonna get our drill and we'll get rocking and rolling. All right, so here we go, rocking and rolling the lazy man's way. Again, this is really nice because we stay nice and linear. We're not gonna damage the oil pump drive shaft or um, anything of that, that nature because we're working straight through this guy. So you just want to go slow and be patient. I tried to pre-fill my oil filter before I put the oil in here, so I don't have to wait on that guy filling up. Um, obviously, if you gun this really hard, you have to remember the rest of your engine is not rotating. So um, I like to be, you know, it's better to be safe than sorry. We're just going to go nice and slow, and eventually we'll start to see oil coming up through our, uh, through our push rods. Just taking a quick look here. Um, this is kind of my reasoning as to why turning the engine always seems to help. As you can see, other ones are lubricating real well, but I always have a couple or three uh, rockers that just really don't want to lubricate unless I turn the engine a few times um, to get it to a different place in the crank rotation and thus the uh, valve train position. So just taking a look here, we're pumping up real good on this old uh, beater bomb boat anchor engine. So. So far, so good. All 
All right, there we go. And the last horse finally stumbles out of the gate. We're seeing oil up to everything. So I'm confident that our lifters are pumped up. We've rotated the engine around a few times. And running this, we've really worked in our uh, break-in lube. And um, all of our zinc is good and blended with our oil even further, even though we mixed it before we poured it in. So at this point, um, I'm pretty confident in the top end. Um, we went through and done all of our valve train adjustment, which I have other videos on that if you want to check those out. Um, you know, this is, um, we're about to conclude our cam swap here. All we got to do is set our ignition timing, which I'm sure I'll make a video on that here coming up and um, get our carburetor on our base carb settings before we light this guy off. But uh, we need to do the run in process when we do start it up. So, anyway, um, that's what I'm going to go ahead and do now. But Basically, that's kind of the run through and the basics of how I go ahead and prime an engine when I'm going to uh, fire it up for the first time. As you can see, we have a lot of good confirmation that um, we're getting oil to everything. Um, you know, you just give yourself a lot better chance to succeed this way. And um, unlike this engine, if you have a fresh engine that you've done a full rebuild, um, you know, this step is just extremely important make sure you don't dry start anything and damage your bearings because that that first initial start is very important you don't want to mess it up so um, anyway that does it for this video um, we're just going to keep rocking and rolling through this guy put the distributor on the carb on hopefully today sometime uh, stomp on this thing out the door and get out of here